I would like to thank you personally for taking the time out of your busy and fulfilling movie watching schedule to join us here on What's Your Favorite Movie? The Internet's slowest growing movie podcast. But you can help this show out. We're not asking for money. What you can do is tell a friend about What's Your Favorite Movie? Share a link to us on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you use. Subscribe to the show on iTunes or leave us a quick review there. It's all good. It's all helpful. What's Your Favorite Movie is a podcast all about our relationships with movies and celebrating the films that make us happy, the movies we quote on a daily basis, the movies that have become a part of us. My name is Ed South. Follow me on Twitter at Ed South if you want a disproportionate amount of Golden Girls tweets in your feed. And follow at WYF Movie Podcast for all things pertaining to to this show. Now, the way this show usually works is I have a guest come on, we talk about their favorite movies, and that drives the show. But you know what? That premise is running a little thin in the planning department because I'm having a hard time tracking down some people to participate. So we're going to do the show a little different today, and I asked my good buddy, the Alec Baldwin of What's Your Favorite Movie? <laughs> the Alec Baldwin, wow. Kevin Anderson, how you doing, Kevin? I am fantastic. Welcome Mr. to What's Your Favorite Movie for I your am. fourth your fourth visit. I have to have some kind of record. As long as I have a record on your list, I am. You thrilled. are the most appearing I'm happy guest. Happy to be You're back, like... by the way, in the beautiful WIF Movie Studio here. It is amazing. I just want to say thank you. The food and the water and <laughs> the way they treat you, you know, when they come in is just really great. And I just want to say everybody's very professional and courteous, and I just appreciate that. Everybody from my receptionist, Cindy, mm-hmm. all the way down to the free bottle of water. That's right. Oh, and the, your uh, your assistant, London, and your uh, <laughs> my other your, your planner guy, uh, what's his name, Gerald? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. I think they call him Jiminy, but anyway. And he is quite a cricket. Well, Kevin was here, uh, been here a few times, but back on the second episode of oh, What's yeah. Your Favorite Movie. Way back very, when this was just a wee baby. A wee baby podcast that nobody listened to, as opposed to now, which is a one-year-old podcast that no one listens to. <laughs> um, and we already covered your favorite movies on episode two, correct? Yes, we did. Well, we we went over uh, five movies that are definitely like my all-time faves. There's it's, because it's, because I bring this up on February third of this very year at seven oh seven p.m. <laughs> you tweeted oh at K- Kevin Joel Ander two. You tweeted some other movies that you said were quote a few of my absolute faves hashtag movies hashtag best movies oh movies that we did not discuss on this program oh boy i have been side slapped here with this boy you this really accusation you, you caught me off guard i i don't see this anywhere in the script but i will <laughs> I will decry you, sir, and say unto my own benefit that that's just tweeting nonsense and it really doesn't Brotherhood of the Wolf. Well, that was on my list. What is that? Not on the show? Oh, I probably didn't. Look, didn't make the cut. I, I know. Probably didn't I'm say. Just playing. Yeah. Okay. It's all good though. Hey, we just we just kid around. We we but kid. <laughs> I feel like that movie didn't make the list that I shared with you because it is very uh, not a well known movie, and I didn't think that a lot of listeners might have known about it. As well as the fact that uh, I know that generally it isn't specifically your type of movie. Is this mo- is the wolf in question a Hanna Barbera character wearing a hat? In this case, no. No. It is actually several very bloody wolves, uh, uh, to, say, to say among other things. Who's in it? Uh, Jean, uh, what is his name? Jean Pierre Lafont du Le Pont. I don't know what his name is. All right. And uh, <laughs> Jean Luc Picard. Jean Luc Picard. No, he's it's not, not Matt Damon, or it's I not thought it was Matt, Matt Damon. Damon no, or... it's, it, the, this movie was made by. Uh, I'm released by Canal Studio Canal, which oh. is a French Canadian uh, based company, and they uh, work with a lot of European and French actors and Canadian actors, and it's just it's a journey. It's a <laughs> it's a journey, <laughs> and the show's not called What's Your Favorite Journey, so I appreciate you not maybe bringing that up. There you go. Raise the Red Lantern. Another fabulous foreign film. Oh, look at you. Wow. Three so times that's a three times F alliteration for your fabulous foreign film lovers out that's there. That's one of my favorite podcasts. Did Check you ever <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it, but you know, I don't want to distract from yours. <laughs> anyway, uh Raise the Red Lantern is a Chinese movie with English subtitles and um you know, it's an exploration of I forget 
exactly when it takes place. I want to say the 1600s. I forget exactly, mm. but it's a very fascinating look at a a modern landlord, uh, a modern, a what was then a Chinese landlord. In other words, lord of the land who had, you know. People under him. He had concubines. He had wives. He had like four or five wives, and he had servants. And and he had red lanterns. And they had red lanterns. Often, when the red lantern was raised, that meant the master of the house was coming to sleep with a particular wife. Ah. So they would put the red lantern in front of her door. There were a series of uh, chambers where the wives uh, lived near, next to each other. Mm, sounds a little interesting. It is actually quite interesting. And then you also tweeted Carlito's way, which I believe we did discuss oh, on yeah. the show. Love it. So. Penelope Ann Miller. Uh, Pacino, yeah. Luis Guzman. I mean, what a great Jorge Porcel. Right. Who, if I might get my uh, movie lover ego here for a second, go for it. Jorge Porcel was a well known, I believe, Venezuelan actor, and he got into that movie. And so, for a lot of people from South America, they would know him. And he played Fat Man Sasso in the film. And, by the way, I played his uh, stand-in, uh, Fat Man Sasso stand-in, Fat Kevin Sasso. And uh, so, they, so. Ca- they called me Fat Kevin Sasso. What, what so, kind so. of job did you do? And, uh, so, so, so. Job. so, so, so. But I worked hard, and I tried hard, and uh, I really wasn't a stand-in. But um, <laughs> I was, get, I, I was, however, knocked out cold in Boogie Nights. But anyway, um, that's another show. Hashtag movies, hashtag Best movies. Yes. Well, look, if I had given you a list of ten movies, one of the those would have made Look, the... we are looking for content in this episode, and that is well, the in this humor case... that I found. Um, the last episode, episode 22, where we had uh, Jason Hughes, lead singer of the band The Real Geniuses. Great on. guys. Great guys. Great guys. Yeah. They're, they're real geniuses. They're real. <laughs> they're but, real geniuses, not to be confused with the movie Real Genius yes. with Val Kilmer. Well, Thank you very much. What the movie's, what the band's named well, after. there you go. But we were talking about uh, Caddyshack in, uh, quite extensively in that episode. One which of the we best have, movies ever. Yes, which we have uh, spoken about. In the past, including your episode, I think we touched on it briefly. I have never mentioned that I have been to the Murray Brothers Caddyshack restaurant in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh wow! We like to talk about places where you can uh, That's celebrate. Awesome. Yeah, where you can celebrate your movie fandom. And I am a huge fan of that movie, as any male worth his golf ball. Oh, I love. Yeah, it's a great, fantastic comic movie. I mean, Bill Murray, who's now a legend, doing legend. what he does best, and. Uh, this restaurant is very irreverent and humorous, and there's, there's a giant golf ball in the side of the building that you can hmm. see from uh, uh, Route 95 as you're going through St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. And then when you're inside... Like, and by Route 95, you mean Interstate 95. Interstate, yes. Okay. Not yeah. Just just, just want to throw you. that out there for the, anyone who I might did, be confused didn't sound right. while they're trying to find the restaurant. <laughs> the route. We heard in- it was off of Route 95 from somebody on a movie podcast. And then they, you know, they get shot because they went in the wrong street <laughs> down there. And, you know, anyway. Um, I appreciate that character, by the way. You're <laughs> by. You like that? Hey, I'm here for old, spontaneity, old, old baby. Senior click, citizen click, Muppet. click, 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 click. Um, Who, Waldorf? They have, uh, like, the ceiling fans are lawnmowers, so the blades oh, are cool. spinning. Yeah. yeah. And then and Carl from Sling Blade goes up there and sharpens one and cuts your head off. It's awesome. And Boy, we got all kinds of mustard. movie references. Right. Everybody gets mustard. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, and, no, we're not doing a Sling Blade <laughs> impression 20 years after the fact. Uh, lots, of, lots of movie props and all kinds of stuff. Um, and for dessert, you can have the Caddy Shake. Ooh, Get what it? flavor is it? I don't know. Go it could be like any flavor. Go for flavor. Actually, no. I had the gopher pie when I was there. It was pretty sweet. It was. Uh, they didn't take all the fur off though of mine, so I got a lot of you know hair stuck in my teeth. But if you're, <laughs> if you are driving to uh, Orlando, as people do, as I often do, uh, you will go right by it. So check it out: the, the Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant in St. Augustine, also known as World Golf Village, and they're building a second location, perhaps in Chicago. Nice. I was disappointed when I looked it up to talk about it. The menu doesn't really have a whole lot of like cutesy names, mm-hmm. um, you know, from the movie. Sure. But like snail snails for the escargot dish. Like I that, get it. Yes. You know. But there's also a Caddyshack restaurant not too far from where we're recording this in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and they do have sandwiches like the Doctor Beeper. And oh, yeah. uh, Danny Noonan. Nice. Danny. Nice. And I understand they, uh, at that location, their uh, chocolate shake is referred to as the shoeshine shake. But anyway. Uh... <laughs> Why I oughta. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Caddyshack Restaurant. Um, also, something I've had on the 
itinerary that I've been meaning to bring up on the show and keep forgetting is we love talking about favorite movies, a whole slew of favorite movies coming to the big screen in 2017. Turner Classic Movies Big Screen Classics series where they are showing old movies at theaters across the nation. So this goes out to everybody. This isn't just like a local theater here in Baltimore or or Gettysburg or wherever. All over the country. Uh, Last year I got to see... uh, Animal House on the big screen. That was awesome. Nice. And then I took my son to see Young Frankenstein, his first Oh, excellent. What screen. a great Mel Brooks yes. classic that is. So these. Are, so I thought I would share some of these with you. We're not getting paid to plug these movies, but these are just awesome Some movies. of our favorites. Some of our favorites. Um, and these are happening on Sundays and Wednesdays at 2 and 7. I have all the dates. Uh, 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock local time. And it's a digital projection uh, that we you already missed singing in the rain and affair to remember, but some of these coming up in March, they're showing all about Eve from 1950. I'm not too familiar with all I about. I don't Eve. believe I've ever seen that one. I believe that's the movie where buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, from okay, <laughs> well you know it's always good to trace back the original. Uh, yes, lines the, that, references. the references. That's uh, March 5th and 8th. Uh, April 2nd and 5th, North by Northwest. Very nice. Ah, what a great movie. You can never go wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, you can never go wrong with Hitchcock. Perhaps you should have a, a drink of... Maybe uh, I should grab your... the, the uh, complimentary <laughs> WYF water here, which is uh, branded quite well. Yes. And, uh... Uh, it has my face on every bottle. Um, North by Northwest, <laughs> such a great movie. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see that for the first time in the theater maybe 20 years ago on a huge... Uh, uh, Panavision screen, a huge oh, wow. wraparound screen. So, uh, April second and fifth. If you've never seen that, that is one of those uh, old movies that's completely accessible. If you want to walk in and, and just watch a great movie, you should watch North by Northwest. Absolutely. Uh, and then at the end of April, they're having the fiftieth anniversary screening of The Graduate. Nice. Oh, yeah. now that's a, wow. See, now that's a great movie that takes me back to my teen years. Tell us. Because that's about when I saw it, even though I, I think it's older than 67? that. 67? Yeah, I was going to say I think it's older than that. Uh, yeah, it's just a really good movie. You know, um, uh, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, you know, who was cast, as we all know by now, who was cast as uh, against many opinions in the movie world uh, in that time. You may know yourself that many, many producers... People, big wigs and things in the uh, studio department didn't think he was capable of playing this young, I did not know you know, sort of college handsome guy or whatever because he's kind of shorter than a lot of the other actors. And he's an unconventional leading he man. He is an unconventional leading man, but he's an amazing actor, and so he pulled it off. And, you know, look at the iconic, you, you know, you were talking about references of great lines. Yeah. There's another great iconic scene and right. a whole bunch of lines from that movie, but, you know, the scene where she, you're looking at him through her leg right. and all that. She puts so. her leg up on the chair and he says, are you trying to seduce me? Right. Mrs. Robinson. Very, very famous scene. Which Mrs. Robinson almost has become synonymous with having an affair with right. an older woman or any kind of... Yeah, he, she was a cougar way back before it was a thing. Ah, she was a graduate. Was that Anne Benning? Anne ben- Bancroft. Anne Bancroft. Mel Brooks' wife. Mel Brooks' wife, right. Um, We're going to go full circle several times tonight, I can tell. <laughs> What's the uh, and then at the end he's banging on the window at the church right he comes around mm-hmm. I've never seen it I, I've meant to watch it for years and years and years and it's I think it's on my Netflix queue but yeah that is the ending when he goes to get the girl he wants and that's that was of course been spoofed many times but yes. not the least of which was in uh, Wayne's, Wayne's World, World too yeah. or one or two yeah. yeah awesome May get ready Kevin May twenty first and twenty fourth I'm very very excited about this super excited. And I even got to second level it in a minute, but May twenty first and twenty fourth, fortieth anniversary of Smokey and the Bandit. Oh wow! I am <laughs> so thrilled that you kept that from me, and I just found that out because we're going. I don't care what What's... we have to do. You said May twenty first and twenty fourth. That's, 20... that's in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. No, if no, I no, no, no. Where is no? This? We can go any. It's all over the place. There's oh, it's one all right over... near you, actually. So okay. Well, My yes. apologies to the fans listening. <laughs> and. Uh, if the fan out there wants any more information, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so all over, and that's May 21st, May 24th, right. the Smoking the Bandit. 40th anniversary awesome. screening. Now, I was thinking about this today when I was thinking about the show, how much I love that movie. And I think what has intensified my love for that movie, which I always liked it a lot, but when I got to college, which is where you and I met, and so right. many of our other guy friends, and for me, I've never had sports as something to connect with dudes sure. with. and I'm not, not even like big into action films, 
But when when I got to college and and the the gang that we hung out with, every single guy was a huge like closet Smokey and the Band fan that like sure. didn't know. Oh yeah, I love that movie. Can quote the whole thing, and we right. used to watch it. Uh, so Actually, excited. that and uh, Cannonball Run, right? Cannonball and. But, so yeah. I hope to get a bunch of us together, maybe, and go see it. Maybe we'll make it a little WYF movie event. And I'm thinking... Maybe we can make it a fan meetup yeah, you go. event for the <laughs> WYM <laughs> staff here and the fans that listen. <clears throat> I'm thinking... I don't usually do costumes. I'm thinking a Sheriff Buford T. Justice costume oh might be... Wow. You, you, could, you would pull it off so much better. You just, well, well, is because he bald I'm, in the movie? Well, he just got I mean, he's balding, balding but he has yeah. hat on and everything. But I probably have more of the rounded features that he had. But uh, <laughs> it would be, yeah, he was just such an amazing comic actor. And Jackie Gleason, we're talking Jackie about. Jackie Gleason uh, plays the, the band, or the sh- Smokey is Smokey. Just a great, yeah. I would love T Justice. I would love to uh, dress up like him and walk around the movie theater and mm-hmm. tell people that would be really cool. Actually, just to have a little costume thing like kick that. Uh, people in the butt and go that. Is an intention getter. That's right. That's one of my favorite lines in that whole movie. <laughs> and uh, the guy he kicked, too, I like. And also, the uh, I was thinking I would wear the wedding dress so, from <laughs> Sally Field's uh, wedding And we'll dress. call you Frog. Um, these are all references to the movie, guy. <laughs> guys. Um, one of the things... And thing we'll I serve would... hush puppies <laughs> at intermission. Yeah, keep going. Hush puppies. <laughs> we ain't got time Don't for that! that. <laughs> Give me a Diablo sandwich <laughs> and a Dr. Pepper and make it quick. I'm in a goddamn hurry. Um... <laughs> Uh, one of the other things I was going to say about Smokey and the Bandit when I was thinking about it was when it used to be on TV back in the 80s and they would dub over right. the lines, whereas now they just blank out whatever cursing there was. And all they do now is just blank out a couple of cuss words. But they would redub entire lines that were off color for right. network television. And this is something that I identified when I was a little kid and verified it later via the internet. But the guy that dubbed... Jackie Gleason's voice was Henry Corden, who was the second Fred Flintstone. And the voice oh, okay. is very, very close to Fred Flintstone. I thought it was Ravencroft that did it. No, so Thurl Razencro- okay. Ravencroft. No, yeah. it's Henry Corden. Yeah, wow. I've, I've okay. identif- you know, found this on the internet. Uh, you see, you get a history lesson here. Right. You get all kinds of information. So he would say the something podcast. that they would completely play on television now, like... There's no way you came from my loins or something right. like that. Some and then, bitch. right, some bitch, and then they, they would dub over it like scum. Oh, that's right. what it was. He he scum said boom. scum bum in Fred Flintstone's voice. Right. There's no there's there is no way you came from my loins. No, no, wait, I gotta change like the words. That. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, very obvious. So I think you can still find that version on TBS yeah. every now and then. The, what it's I like hysterical, to but actually worthless to me because it's. Yeah, you got. I, I want to see the original. You got to get uh, original uh, Jackie That's Gleason. Right. So May twenty first and twenty fourth, Smokey and the Bandit. And if uh, maybe we'll pass on some info when we get to that uh, later in the year, closer to May twenty first and twenty fourth. Don't forget, folks, that Jerry, the stutterer, uh, what's his name? The, Jerry the, Reed. Jerry Reed. Jerry the stutterer Reed is in that. And for those of you that don't, he know doesn't who he stutter is. in that though. He stutters in Cannonball, right? right. But that's the that's thing. Mel Tillis. Oh, that smell yeah. tells. Oh. I'm saying, I'm saying, I say, we need more beer. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. I say, we need more beer. If only you folks out there in <laughs> could see internet world this. could see this, you would be on the floor <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh boy, that was great. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Mel Tillis. Yeah, Mel Tillis you're right, you're and right. uh, Joe, Montana, of, yeah. Joe Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. Game. All right, let's move on this list, but it's all Before good. he stole the dolphin. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's a, we're, we're, these are good references, people. That's an yeah, Ace Ventura not, reference. You're not going to get this with some other, right. uh, you know, fly-by-night podcast. podcast guest. Right, with thousands of downloads. You need to come here come for on. this kind of stuff. June 4th and 7th, another one that you might want to be at. 1972's The Godfather. Oh, well, there you go. On that's... the big screen. Certainly one of my faves. Uh, yes. It's an amazing movie. And we discussed that show in length uh, on episode number 14 of this show. With the guest Aaron which, which With Aaron, which I was remember. called Aaron Likes the Godfather he does and like the Little the Rascal. Yes, I actually texted him this morning and said, hey, it's coming out June 4th and so on. Uh, June 11th and 14th, we have Some Like It Hot from 1959. Now, I need to rewatch this. I haven't, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I mean, it's funny enough. But I would rewatch it with you. But you know, my memory of it is that it's funny. But it's 
unfortunately for us in this world, it's become so passe to have guys in drag. This is uh, Tony Curtis and Jack, uh, Lemon. Jack Lemon, right? Yeah. And for whatever reason, they're in drag. And Marilyn Monroe's in it? Yeah, right? at some point, yeah. So I think it's on the AFI's list of like top ten funniest movies of all time, like their number one funniest movie. I saw it when I was a kid and didn't really get it, so I would definitely be interested in rewatching sure. Some Like It Hot from 1957 on June 11th and 14th on the big screen. Uh, July 30th, August 2nd. This is like second on my list of what I would go out and see. One of my favorites, Fast Times at Ridgemont <gasps> High. Oh, yeah. Yes. That, that is, is, oh, man. A great movie. There's so many things about that movie. There's just the whole, you know, teenage discovery years. The soundtrack is outstanding. The cars were amazing. It's so funny. It's so realistic. It's sexy, thanks to Phoebe Cates mm-hmm. and some other Jennifer things. Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't remember her name. and some other uh, young ladies in it. And it's just a fantastic movie. It uh, is a... Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker's in it, Forrest yeah. Forrest Whitaker. They wreck his car or something. Yeah. Um, now I can't stop thinking about Jennifer Jason Lee and the carrot. But, um... <laughs> I'm wondering if you're thinking about her doing with the carrot when I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yes, that's sure what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, we said about the music. This movie, the movie starts right off with the Universal logo, and I know you're not as big a fan as I am of the Go Go's, but we got the beat is the first song, and that it's Universal song, logo comes up and wing out the Great, good movie. stuff. And then also in that movie is um, I can't remember the song now, but there's a certain song that plays while the one guy and the girl are like doing it in the baseball She's dugout. He's gonna be hey. somebody's <laughs> baby, right? Gonna shine so tonight, Jackson Brown. Ooh-wee. That's Jackson Brown, I'm pretty sure. Every time that song plays, someone's losing She's their virginity. Gonna be somebody's only light gonna shine tonight. And then she gets knocked up. And... Right. Um, every time that song plays in real life, someone's losing their virginity. That's just yes, and let me just say for you movie fans out there that just can't grasp the reality of the situation, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, as well as uh, Last American Virgin... Uh, were two of the best. Oh, oh, did I say that out loud? Uh, because that's oh, getting cut. Because in those days, oh boy, here we go. He's writing notes. They were the best ones because you didn't back then. There were no VCRs. There were yes. no, you know, there was no internet. You had to get something spicy going. You had to. All right, go ahead. Move hey, on. next on the list. <laughs> that was it's a convers- R rated. It's and a, this is a G rated. It's though. a conversation about how easy. Yes, just how easy it is to get your hands on uh, explicit material nowadays versus a mainstream R-rated film. Hey, when you're done doing that, August 13th and 16th, how about Bonnie and Clyde? The 50th anniversary of Bonnie and Clyde, starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway? Yeah, I think Clyde was Bonnie or Clyde? I think so. I actually met a producer that worked with Faye Dunaway, uh, you know, since I'm in the biz and all. And uh, see... Get used to it. So anyway, uh, I met a guy though seriously because he is one of the McDaniel McDaniel alum that uh, from your school. I went there, right? And um, he worked with Faye Dunaway, and he didn't have a lot of nice things to say about her. Let's just leave it at that. If I ask, if I ever met Faye Dunaway, I would certainly, certainly ask her about her time on the set of the Monkey Classic. Dunstan checks in. <laughs> Wow, I've <laughs> she's never also even the, heard of it. She's also the bad guy in uh, Supergirl, I mm-hmm. believe, the original Supergirl film. Sure. Uh, September seventeenth and twentieth. Now I'm surprised this movie hasn't been on anyone's list yet for favorite movie. E. T. the Extraterrestrial, mm. September seventeenth to the twenty and the twentieth, nineteen eighty two's E. T. D. Do you like the E.T., Kevin? I do, actually. And, you know, that is a very good movie. And I, that's something I probably should rewatch because um, I haven't seen that in ages. I love the movie. I love the soundtrack. Of course, Neil Diamond's Heartlight song, which really Turn strangely enough is about E.T., which is just weird. But I know. did not find that out until two or three years ago. Oh, I heard yeah, that song I, was on the right. I probably called I, you and was yeah, like. Yeah, I might have <laughs> known it only minorly before that, but not much, if any. But. But yeah, if you don't know weird. what we're talking about, there's a song called Heartlight, which was on the radio a lot when we were little, and just song in one mm-hmm. ear out the other. Catchy little song. Damn song's about E.T. Right. And it was on the radio. Because E.T., you know, was he was huge. Uh, had a heartlight. So. He had a heartlight. But no, that's a very good movie. Yes. It's e. very T. touching. And, of course, 
I'm sure you know, and maybe some of the fans out there may not know, that M&M's turned down the opportunity right. to be in that movie, and Reese's Pieces sales went through the roof. Right, so. it made Reese's Pieces. So that when I'm making a movie after I get my degree in filmmaking, don't turn me down for candy usage. Okay, right. keep going. Zagnut. You going to cut um, that one out? Nope. <laughs> Zagnut. Right. And that's a good film to take the kids to if you want to introduce the kids to some older films. Go take them to see E.T., The Extraterrestrial, September 17th and 20th. Hey, how about a 30th anniversary screening of The Princess Bride? Oh, wow. Oh, my God. We're getting old. 1987. 30 30 years? years. What am I, Dr. Evil? What's going on? We were in high school there. Uh, Yeah, October 15th and 18th. Princess Bride is a lot of people's favorite movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Discussed in length on this show in episode four, Diana Likes the Princess Bride. So go back and check out that catalog title. November 12th and 15th, the 75th anniversary of 1942's Casablanca. Yeah, you know, I have to be honest with you, not one that I... I saw it when I was young, and maybe that's why I don't like it, because I feel like it's a bit of a dry movie. Dry. I hate to upset any Casablanca fans, because I know it's a humongous, you know, it's a big, well-known movie and all, but just not for me. I don't think... uh, Yeah, it's... You could say, Ed, I don't need them to play it again, (laughs) huh? Huh? You could say that, couldn't you? (laughs) You could. You could say that. You could say that. Um, It's one of those movies that plays nicely, but if you pay too much attention to it, it gets bogged down in story, and it's not as wonderful as you may remember it, but it's a nice film. And finally, rounding out this list, finally, December 10th and 13th. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. This is a darn fine motion picture. 1967, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Oh, with uh, Sidney Poitier? Sidney Poitier, oh, yeah. and I believe uh, Spencer Tracy, and is Catherine Hepburn in that too? I honestly, I couldn't tell you because I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember Sidney Poitier because yes. I'm a big fan of his, and he's an amazing actor. And Who's the girl? Does she somebody in it? What I this movie remember. is about, this is 1967, so it's, I, it's Spencer Tracy, and I, I should have looked all this up, Catherine Hepburn. And they are the old couple, and their daughter brings home uh, her new boyfriend to meet them at dinner, for dinner. It brings them home for dinner to meet them, and he is black. Which, which in 1977 was enough to, 67 was enough to carry a two-hour film. But it's a very funny movie, and it's, uh, you know, eye-opening, and I assume it was very controversial and a hot topic back in 67. Um, great movie. Now are we going to do dueling Excellent. Catherine Hepburn impressions or just move on from Let's there? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't believe he's black. I, 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 well, I'll tell you something. This might not be Catherine Hepburn. It might be more Henry Fonda. But if you're going to stand there, you're going to suck face. Oh. Wow, wrong actor and wrong movie. Oh, uh, <laughs> Peter Fonda was a Peter Fonda <laughs> Uh, old Golden Pond. Old so Golden Pond, right. That is uh, the TCM Big Classic <laughs> Series. Uh, go to Fathom Events, F A T H O M, events.com, and uh, we'll post some info on Twitter so you can check it out. But these, all these great movies uh, coming to That's the a big really screen. Great thing. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, and you get a little host segment with it, and they'll give you some, uh, some info. And nine out of ten times, you'll be the youngest person in the theater, guaranteed. So who knows? Hey, we haven't talked about our good friends at DexShirts.com in a while, and they have a brand new t-shirt in their line of t-shirts featuring the alien from the Aliens movie. I'm going to let you say the name of it since you are more familiar with it. Uh, Xenomorph. Xenomorph. The Xenomorph. There's a new alien movie coming out this summer or sometime soon. I saw a, a poster for it at the theater the other day. Which I skipped over a new movie section. I was going to ask. Is this you. a remake or a reboot? No, I think it's a new one. A redo, like a, a redux? like a revisit. A I don't revisit? know. I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea. A rehashing. I, I saw the poster at the theater the other night. Uh, I'm so excited about the Smurf movie coming out that I didn't really <laughs> pay any attention to it. But did you know that? So what are we calling it? The Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Yeah. The Xenomorph has only four minutes of screen time in the first movie. Wow. The Xenomorph and Alien is slightly different from others of his kind featured in the following sequels in terms of behavior. Unlike the other aliens in the series, which kill only for food, host gathering, or self-defiance, this alien uh, is very sadistic and enjoys killing for fun. So why wouldn't you want to put him on a t-shirt, right? Exactly. And share with your friends. that You'd be pretty sweet showing up to the new Alien movie wearing a one-of-a-kind original Dex Shirts 
Xenomorph alien t-shirt that you can't buy at the local store. That's right. Because they are made to order. order. That's right. And everyone will say, hey, that's cool. It's a design that's hand-drawn by an incredibly talented artist and then digitally rendered and professionally printed. That's DexShirts.com, D-E-X Shirts.com. They are very nice and support our show. And uh, as a special thank you to you for listening to What's Your Favorite Movie? You can use the promo code WYFMOVIE at the checkout to save 20% off. 20% cent, 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 cent. Off your entire order. Uh, and hopefully, uh, maybe they'll sponsor an Echo Machine in the near future. Right. But, and it uh, does work. I Just let me interrupt here for a second. Go then, for it. And just tell you, friends out there listening. Friends. I, Charlie Rose, I'm here to tell you that Dex Shirts is the finest quality shirts you can find. No, but seriously, though, I ordered a shirt. I got my 20% off. It's really cool. I, I got the Obey They Live from the uh, old classic uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper They Live, and I was very thrilled with it, and it's an excellent bargain. And use the code, get 20% off, get a unique shirt, be that person that everyone envies, and then tell them, get on WIFM Movie and get your own code and get your own shirt. D-E-X shirts.com. What I like about their shirts are some of the references are not obvious. Like, I didn't even know... I know what movie you're talking about, but you had to point it out that it was that movie that they live. Right. I didn't when I was looking through there. Well, I wonder actually if uh, I don't know. I just turned Fargo. I actually, I, I actually <laughs> you got Arby's all over I, you. Oh yeah, a little sauce there. Eh? I wonder if uh, a lot of you know. I know that movie's a cult classic. Wait, but, I'm lost. What movie are we talking? Uh, well, about? I'm, talking, I'm talking about the, you're right. <laughs> they no, live. Talking about live. they live. The thing is, really quickly though, when I was down in the Southwest uh, for a year few years back as a cattle hand you right uh, snake over. wrangler okay i well it was, it was in west texas i worked as a snake wrangler out in the farm there and uh these snakes are poison let me tell you they they might have called me a yankee but they respected my snake wrangling <laughs> capabilities by the time i was done so anyway <laughs> i'm not gonna say i won hearts but i proved myself so there, now i forgot what wrangler. i was gonna say about the movie no but seriously <laughs> down there a lot of people had on the obey shirts and that's okay. a big thing from that movie yeah and you know when you put on the glasses there i don't want to give too much away but you put on the special glasses and you go whoa the world's going something weird here so i saw a lot of those down there and i wondered if actually people knew what it was from i gotcha and you know i think it's become a cultural thing does to the movie take place in texas no okay no does it have snakes in it i uh, don't think so not that i recall by the way if you tweet us at wyf movie podcast is that the name of the <laughs> yes at wyf movie podcast what film am i referencing when i say snakes poison gave one to my son once Oh my God, rest his soul. I will. I will literally send you a prize. I have no clue what it is, no, but I'll tell you. It. But I'll tell you what. You should start a contest. I, I just did, yeah. didn't I? There you, well, there <laughs> you I'll go. send you something. First person to identify what movie that was, I'll send you something. I swear. A free something. A free something. The something. First, <laughs> and you will also have your likeness if you choose plastered <laughs> all over the WIFM for all social media followers. <laughs> um, and we'll send you uh, Kevin's water bottle from today. Absolutely, my DNA may be priceless. Someday. <clears throat> I came across this list the other night, and I thought it was very interesting. And I printed it out, and it's very small, and that's why I'm wearing my glasses right now. Uh, the the highest grossing franchises in film history. Interesting. Franchise now to me, franchise means three or more films. Okay. They seem to think it means two or more, which to me just is a movie with a sequel. But uh, I kind of agree with you. The highest grossing franchises of all time and of course they're all mostly recent because movie ticket prices are much higher but what do you what do you think's on this list kevin what do you think would you venture uh, a guess at number one i would say it's the godfather um oh the number one of all time then oh okay wait it's got to be a disney movie is it a disney movie well or around about avatar? Avatar? no <laughs> avatar is one a, movie this is yeah, a franchise a, yeah, a series movie. of films according the police to, academy film <laughs> that's it it's sad that that's not on here. <laughs> They're saying the number one franchise is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is comprised of 14 films that have all grossed a lot of money. Now, I'm going to mm. give them that because they do all connect. Do you know what I'm talking about, the Marvel? Yes, yes. I've seen a few of them. Avengers, Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, all mm. et cetera. So 
all 14 of them have grossed a lot of money. So they are, uh, and they all are interconnected. Now I saw another list that put the Pixar films as the number one franchise, but they're not, that's not a franchise. That's a studio. Right. So I don't, I don't buy that, but the Marvel cinematic universe, uh, $10 billion worldwide. Wow. Holy yes. smokes. Matt and the, uh, number one in that whole franchise is the Avengers has made hmm. quite a bit of money. So interesting. Yes. I, uh, I did not know that, Ed. Have you seen some of them? You've seen some of I've them. Seen, I've seen a few of them, I'm sure, yeah. I, surprisingly, have seen all of them. Wow. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I saw Thor back in 2013. It was just one of those things, like, I felt like going to a movie. Mm-hmm. So we went and saw it, and I loved it. And then I saw the Avengers, just to go with a friend. And, uh, wait, Thor, oh, Thor Dark World was 2013. Thor is 2011. Okay. Saw the Avengers, I loved that, and then I was hooked, and I've seen all of them. I went back and watched them. They're good the, movies. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. very good. So, Marvel Cinematic Universe, highest grossing film franchise, uh, and that only started in 2008. Number two on the list, do you want to keep guessing or I'll just tell you? J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. Ah, uh, of course. The Harry Potter films. Yes. Well, you know... We all enjoyed watching Harry and his cronies grow up. <laughs> Didn't we, though? Yes. I am only on the third movie. I've seen the first three. I so. have only seen, I think, two or three, and then no specific order. Oh, I, I saw see. The Blood, the Half-Blood Prince. Yes, 2009. And a couple of other ones, but yeah. I'm not <laughs> I'm not against it. I'm just not that big Half-Blood Prince made $934 million Well, at worldwide. least seven of that came out of my pocket. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, the newest one was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which I did not see either. Yeah, I, but... I haven't seen it, uh, that at all. Number three on the list, Star Wars. The Star mm-hmm. Wars saga, which is comprised of the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. The only actual movies that matter, right? The prequel trilogy. Yeah. Uh-huh. The sequel trilogy oh, with, with one entry. The sequel trilogy counts. That was a very good movie. Okay. The Force Awakens. Do I look very stately with my glasses on? As you I look do. At you? Have you, you ever do. seen me with my glasses you on? You look stately. It's the state, state of Hawaii. It's the stately. <laughs> with that shirt. Uh, and, uh, that was not a size reference. That was no, a I gotcha. Um, Hawaii is probably one of the smaller states, isn't it? Uh, Rogue oh. One just came out. And then this list includes the Clone Wars from 2008, which a lot of people ignore. But why would you ignore it? You liked the Clone Wars movie, didn't you? I thought you? it was okay. You know, the cartoon one. The there's yeah. a there's Attack of the Clones and then there's the Clone Wars. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, no, I did see it though, and I mean, okay with it. You know, they're all good movies in their own way, and they all matter somehow or another. Yes, and we're going to be talking about Star Wars on the show very soon in an upcoming episode again. So keep your lightsabers tuned. Hey, how about number four on this list? Twenty six films in this franchise. Wow. Would you like to guess what that is? 26 films in this franchise. Is it like King Kong or something? It or? is James Bond. Oh, okay. James wow, I just been Bond. that many. I have to say folks, I know I'm going to angry, I'm going to anger a lot of listeners, but for me, the only James Bond will forever be George Lazenby, the original <laughs> and one and only time he did it. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, what was that movie called? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Made oh, okay. $64 million. Which back in that day was probably the well, equivalent yes. of like, you know, three or four hundred million. $74 million. million. Right. <laughs> um, on Her Majesty's cervix. Can you name... <laughs> oh, that was, that the, was in the back that was room the other the video. Version. Yeah, that was the porn version. Uh, Daniel Craig. That Daniel... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Daniel Craig has played James Bond. Yep. Pierce Bronson. Mm-hmm. Roger Moore. Yep. You know, Roger Moore is the only actor who's in my... Two of my top five He's favorite great. I love Roger Moore. He's Roger. got a great sense of humor. Who? Roger Moore. Who? Roger, Roger Moore. Moore. Do you know his real name? I do not. Seymour Goldfarb? <laughs> sure. Well, how would you not that's figure a, it that's was That's a that cannibal from... run. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I and forget. You're going running around like this Roger Moore character. Uh, oh, mother, you're too Jewish. All right. Oh Is that offensive? No, <laughs> no, no. Sean Connery, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton only played him twice. Living Daylights and License to Kill. And then we have uh, Casino Royale, the original. Do you know who played J- James Bond in the 1967 Casino Royale? Uh, do not. Do you guys know? Woody Allen. Woody Allen. 
<laughs> I'm going to go and bang my head on the wall for a minute. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Number five on this list, J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth Saga, featuring The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings films. Excellent movies. Felt just a little ripped off when the uh, dragon finally got awoken. Uh, what's his name? The, the big the, the dragon. Dragon Man? Uh, no, I forget his name. Dragor? It'll come back to me right Dragini? when we're done. <laughs> it's not the dragon? It's none of those. But... Um, he uh, he he comes alive and he's going out to go burn the uh, village and then they cut it and it's going to be another movie and it's like okay well that could have just been one movie keep going uh, the combined running time of those six Hobbit movies is seventeen and a half days seventeen and a half there days there you go this list also uh, works into the equation the nineteen seventy eight Lord of the Rings animated film Do you I love that? that one yes actually thirty million bucks made by Rankin Bass it was or no. I think it was made by Ralph Bashke. Well, you would know, and I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I don't know. I'm going to retract both of those comments. But it was a great movie. I loved its expositoriness. You know, it's oh. like, look, there's another army coming. Oh yeah, five armies. <laughs> we don't you have know, to like, animate. Right? It. You know, it's just really funny. But yeah, it was a good movie. We should pick up the pace a little bit. Number six on the list. Batman. Yeah. Fourteen. They're including fourteen Batman films here. Yeah. Well, look, if Adam West isn't involved. If well, he Adam, was in two of them. If Adam, yeah, well, if he's not involved, that much. He was in the 1966 Batman the movie, mm-hmm. which made a million dollars. And there's a new which film. Is probably more money than he's ever made in his whole acting <laughs> career. Keep going. There's a new film that just came out this year called Return of the Caped Crusaders, which is animated, but it's animated in the style of the old TV show. Pretty cool. I've seen that. Oh, cool. Uh, and then, of course, right now in theaters, the number one movie playing is the Lego Batman movie, which was very funny and very uh, good. It's a really good movie. You should go see it. Legos are fun. Legos are fun. <laughs> Kevin Anderson of What's Your Favorite Movie says, Lego Batman, Legos are fun. The Legos are fun. <clears throat> Number seven, the X-Men films. X-Men oh. films. I've only seen one and Deadpool. I wonder if number ten is going to just be a big X. X-Men X? X-Men X. Well, we got a couple more films to go. Uh, number eight on the list, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Or as my father-in-law would call it, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man. Uh, number nine, how did this happen, folks? How have we allowed The Fast and the Furious to be the ninth oh. highest grossing film franchise of all time? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Especially when, the fir- well, the first one made $207 million. How did that happen? What? I'm actually, I'm actually puzzled by it myself <laughs> because it's just like, you know, complete nonsense to me. The, it's like people just make a decision to go to a movie very fast and very uh, furiously. furiously. Number 10. This might also be questionable in the movie ta- the movie going tastes of the public. Transformers? You all kept yeah. going after number one? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm sure that Shia LaBeouf completely <laughs> satisfied whatever casting couch director he <laughs> slept with. But for acting, not so much. I would also like to add that this list incorporates into the numbers 1986's Transformers the Movie, which was an animated film, which not only featured uh, cursing cartoon Transformers, which was crazy in 1986, soundtrack also featured Weird Al Yankovic. Nice. Hey, no offense to Weird Al. You guys can keep the Transformers. I'm waiting for the Voltron movie. Give me five dragons any day, uh, five lions any day of the week. (laughs) You've got dragons on the mind. I do have dragons on my mind. Number 11, Pirates of the Caribbean. Eh. Yeah, exactly. I am not a fan. I watched the movie. Let me just say very quickly, podcast listeners. Let me get my pet out. The first movie I watched, the moment Johnny Depp opened his... Uh, eyelinered mouth. Fat I was girl. just like done. Really? I just yeah. I swear he was. I mean, I've done over the top characters before, but that was just, that's ridiculous. That was a grotesque over the top. <clears throat> what people forget about Pirates of the Caribbean films now that they're so big and popular is that the first one came out, and it, you know it's based on a ride at Disneyland in Disney World, and people are like, "How are you going to make a movie based on a ride?" And not only is the movie extremely well done, the first one, The Curse of the Black Pearl, Mm. it pays homage to the ride very well. It incorporates a lot of the ride into the movie. Mm -hmm. Second one, I was done. The second one went off course for me, if that's a boat pun, which it's not. If I were Jeffrey Rush, I would have said no. I'm not. No, thank you. Number 12, if you got the checks Jeffrey Rush was getting, you'd say yes, please. I would be. It's probably his only merchandising checks he's ever gotten. Uh, Yeah, probably. Number 12, Think Dinosaurs. 
think dinosaurs. Oh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, Park yes. Yeah. Uh, number 13, and, and let me say, for my money, I really liked uh, Jurassic Park 3 a lot. I don't think I saw it. I'm not... I am an actor, and honestly, what I enjoy in movies and other act things is, is dinosaurs. Is, is realism, <laughs> is natural, is is realism. So, anyway. well, then you'll love number thirteen on the list, the Shrek franchise. Oh yeah, it doesn't get any more real than that. The Shrek franchise. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. I liked it. I saw them all. You saw them all. Well, I saw at least the first two or three. <sighs> I don't know how many there were, but I did see two or three of them. I will make a controversial statement right now. Shrek and the Shrek films ruined America's sense of humor because our sense of humor went down very quickly after that with farting and more farting. You think it was that movie? Did it go down south? And did you think that... Why would you think that movie, though? Why would you think that movie? Because that movie was so... Dumb and Dumber or something like, you know. Because Shrek had more farting in it i think than dumb and dumber okay fair enough it just it made a lot more money than dumb and dumber and it just had such an impact on films and children's mm. films which is where you start to develop your sense of humor as a kid i and see i don't know okay fair enough I, I get you i'm not big on the shrek saga number 14 the twilight saga never saw any of it twilight no, never saw any but of it. we did go see you and i did go see vampire suck in the theater oh boy <laughs> <laughs> don't they though and number 15 we need to speed this up number 15 kind of irritates me ice age yeah I didn't really see people and... how does shrek and ice age make the list but toy Story is nowhere to be seen let me race through the rest of this real quick uh 16 is the hunger games uh, which i like a lot those are good movies you ever watch seen them? them no 17 avengers which how you can't have Wasn't Avengers? That on the list yeah, already? I don't understand that, guys. But I guess it's its own little mini mini world. Mm-hmm. Eighteen Mission Impossible. Eh, they're okay. Eh. Nineteen Despicable Me. Again, I never saw it. Really, guys? No toy. How is Toy Story not on this list? But Despicable Me is um, also ruined movies. Twenty The DC Extended Universe, which is made up of Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. and I guess Suicide Squad. How many, should... how many things are on this list? 25, Jesus and we're almost well. done. And you, and you, and you, okay, keep going. I'm going to say some things where you can't use any of this. I'm just going to be like, poop. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to wrap it so up. So you can just get, no, I'm just, 21, yeah, I'm just to... 21 Iron Man, 22 uh, DC Extended Universe. I, isn't, I, it's on there twice? I don't understand. I, maybe it's a misprint. Oh, I'm sorry. 20 is Superman. Okay. 20 is Superman, which includes the Christopher Reeve uh, films, yeah, I was ask, Supergirl, yeah. Superman Returns. Even the one with Richard Pryor? Yes, okay. number three. Uh, Iron <laughs> Man... 22 DC Extended Universe, 23 Star Trek, 13 Star Trek films. I've seen each and every one of them. They're all pretty good. The original one is my favorite. Yeah, good stuff. Where you get 28 minutes of uh, the ship docking. (laughs) 24, come on, people, Madagascar? Really? (laughs) Why are we watching Madagascar? To the tune of $2 billion worldwide. That's outrageous. Two billion, two and a half billion to be. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. 25. Captain America. That is the highest grossing franchises. My favorite's Police Academy. I would say Police Academy is better than most of the ones on that list. Where's the Pink Panther? That's not mm. on the list either. Oh. That's not on the list either. All the right. Spectacular. Yes. Kevin. Yes. I think we should wrap this ship up. What do you think? I, I said think, ship. S-H-I-P. I think we should uh, wrap it. Wrap we it. should do what the fabulous Thunderbird said and wrap it up and we'll take it. What? Oh, yes, they Music did. reference for our next podcast. Wrap What's your favorite music? All right, guys. This is Ed South. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Ed South and the show at WYF Movie Podcast. Follow Kevin and his affirmations of life and positivity <laughs> at oh, you Kevin. Sure. No, why? Because I've been doing that a lot lately. You, and are, you have a very positive account. And that's good. At between this all point, the, I'm just, you know, things are good. That's so. all we got. All we got left is positivity. Um, how can they find you on Twitter, Kevin? You can find me at the amazing handle of at Kevin Joel Ander 2 because Twitter uh, are a bunch of lousy liars that say you can change your handle name, screen name, whatever you kids call it nowadays. Yada da da and whatever you want to put in there. Yeah, da da. But Kevin Joel Ander 2, 
or uh, look for me in the many comments of the WYFM Movie <laughs> Podcast uh, <laughs> section. Uh, our email is favemoviepodcast at yahoo.com. Please send us an email. Let us know what you think. If you have any suggestions, any of that good stuff, tell me where to go. It's all good. All right, Kevin, thanks for joining us. It is my pleasure, sir. Thank you for having me. Audience, thank you for joining us. And until next time, it's Khaki Wishes and Cookie Dreams. Awesome. Awesome.